Good evening, welcome back. Uh, this evening, we're gonna be doing a few things, so a few different videos, but the first thing I wanna start with is my Epiphone guitar display that you guys see hanging on the wall. We maybe not right now because all these cases are in the way, but normally, when I don't have my area packed full of stuff, you can see this hanging on the wall on the neon sign, which is right there. So, what I'm going to be doing with this this evening is putting a set of monster strings on it. So, these are limited edition strings. Um, I'll let the cat out of the bag. I got them really cheap, and that's the only reason I bought them, because I had a set before, and I sold one set on, on Reverb for $35. Bucks. Um, I'm going to use this set on my display just for shits and giggles because they're green check this out i mean let me get the big one where's the big one at right here check that out so that'll look kind of cool on here so i'm gonna go ahead and just throw the green strings on this for display purposes and then after that my other two sets I will put up for sale on Revert, so oh, it's down there. So if anybody is interested in the green Monster Energy strings, they're Dunlop 1046s. I will be putting these two up for sale on Revert because I don't really have any use for them. But if somebody has like a metal guitar or something cool and crazy that's got uh, different colors on it or whatever, these things would be cool. Uh, imagine that they probably glow in a black light too. So we'll actually check that out under a black light when we get done here. Something I never did to this either. This is brand new. I never peeled the thing off the humbuckers. I'm gonna get that off before it ends up turning yellow and staying stuck permanently. It, it is a brand new guitar. It's just hung there for years. Could probably use a good dusting too. But the uh, oop, the strings on this thing, I don't know if you can see it, but they're getting quite rusty. So I figured, you know, what the heck. We'll jazz up the uh, decoration a little bit. What did I do with my cutters? I didn't get them. I also want to show you guys, while I'm changing these strings, how to lock your string without a locker. So let's go ahead and I'm, I'll just bring you guys down here to look at it. Let me find my neck rest. So the way that I string them up, you can do drop tuning and all that and not worry about your string slipping out. Whereas in the way that they have this one, let's see if we can zoom in here. Well, now it's wanting. No, oh, damn thing don't cooperate with me. So if you can see, it just goes in and it's continuing around underneath of itself. So I'm going to show you how to string it up and lock the string on so it doesn't slip out when you start to drop tune. Boy, I just hate this friggin' DGI thing. Absolutely hate it. And they're having a lot of issues with this DGI crap. These things are made in China and it's a Chinese company and they're blacklisted now. So any, any of the apps and stuff on the app store, they're absolutely trash, they don't work. I had several problems with it where I was just using the stick to hold my phone there for a while doing videos. They worked nice in the beginning, but again, they're trash now. So I do not recommend getting these. It's actually the best thing out there right now for a handheld, but because they're blacklisted, none of the Play Store apps and stuff like that are working right. You actually have to go to DJI's website and you gotta go on there and download stuff and use your phone to scan QR codes and it still doesn't work right. It just it's so disgusting and, and disappointing. But anyhow, moving on. 
gonna go ahead and get these cut off here. Yeah, these were really rusty. Should go ahead and just wipe it off too while I got it strings off of it. I wasn't gonna keep any of these. I was just gonna sell them all, but I thought, well, I need to open a pack because the last pack I didn't get to see. And this pack, I got three of them, so I wanted to see what the green looked like. And then I'm like, hey, this thing's got really rusty strings on it. So for display purposes, let's just throw green strings on the white guitar with a red light, right? Something different. Again, it's just a display model, so no big deal. You know, I think it's going to look kind of cool. All right, so I guess before I string this up, I should go ahead and wipe it off. And I'll just use the cheapest guitar detailer that I have, which is actually pretty good. This one here you can use on the satin and matte finishes, like the Tribute here in the kind of semi-gloss matte finished uh, studios and stuff. But it works good on this kind of stuff too. We're just trying to knock the dust off of it. It's a brand spanking new guitar. Do I? Yeah. And as you can see, I wasn't prepared for my video. Uh, back in the day, my boss told me that I needed to practice the six Ps. And I said, what's the six Ps? Now mind you, this is back when I was 18 years old and I started working for this company. I was there 19 and a half years, but he told me the six Ps are prior planning prevents piss poor performance. So I didn't practice my six Ps. If I did, I'd have had all this stuff laying here and we'd have just moved around and you wouldn't have seen me running all over the place for stuff. But if you wonder what the six Ps are, that's what they are. Prior planning prevents piss poor performance. So the crazy thing is this is a polyurethane finish and it's a brand spanking new guitar it's never been anywhere but on that rack look at that you can see the shadows where the bridge and the tailpiece were much brighter white so that's kind of cool that epiphone is aging you know let's give the back a squirt here real quick just a quickie. Might as well peel this plastic off too before it gets all yellow and yucky. Because this thing is like way old already. I don't even remember what year it is. What year is it? 2006. So it's already pretty old. It's been hanging on the wall for a long time. <coughs> And it's going to just, <coughs> wow, I'm choking to death here. It's going to get dirty again, so I'm not going to waste a ton of time on it. Just real quick, wipe it off and hang it back on the rack. I might do something with this guitar one day. Just screw around, change the pickup in it and the pots. I don't know. Whatever I do, I'm going to make sure I don't have to cut the strings off because I won't get another set of those and it's just a display so I have to really run out of things to do to want to change the pickups and stuff in this I might as well give the fretboard a quick wipe down too and hit the headstock and then we'll get these strings on and I'll show you what I'm talking about with the uh, way I do it so it locks the string on This little special here has the push-in style tuners. It's got really cheap tuners on it. The front of it looks good, but you turn it over, the tuners have a lot to be desired. I can understand they're trying to make them affordable, but I mean, does it really cost them that much more to produce their little Grovers versus 
these things here. I mean, look at those. Those are pathetic. Anyhow, moving on to the fretboard now. Let's just give it a quick wipey down. Throw some lemon juice on it. I'm not going to worry about cleaning it because it hasn't been played, so there's no finger grime or nothing on it. And any little bit of dust will wipe off of it when I wipe this lemon juice off. I did order a whole bunch of stuff that's on the way. I gave you guys a hint that I was bidding on another guitar. I lost. I got confident that I was going to win it and I didn't bid anymore. Long story short, I was bidding on a 333 Tom DeLong, the brown one with the racing stripe down the middle, single pickup, uh, volume knob only. Kind of reminded me of uh, my Steve Stevens guitar that I had with just the volume. But anyways, I had like 5400 on it and there wasn't any bidding on it right until the very last second, as always. Um, and it ended up going for 5900 bucks. So somebody got a really good deal on an all original Tom DeLong 333 because those things are selling for eight to 10 grand. So I'm kind of bummed out I didn't get that. But at the same time, if I would have got it, then I'd have had almost $6,000 tied up into that, hoping to get eight to 10 grand. So everything happens for a reason. And I'm bidding on a few other guitars and I'll give you a hint. They're not Gibsons this time. I'm actually bidding on something else. And this is the only time too that you'll ever see me use a washcloth on a guitar and that is strictly just for the fretboard any other time I only use Dunlop polish cloths or Gibson I've had a fender one but I don't know what happened to that one it's long gone by now a little sharp on the fret right there all right let me wipe the front of that off again because I got splatters on there and we're about ready here. All right. We're going to get back on the Sidekick 65 here next. That'll be the next video. And that awful sound that you hear right there is the uh, condensation pump on my furnace. Pumping water into our sump pump. Let me see if I can zoom in on this a little more here. I'll just adjust this. So I'll do the big E string here first. Throw the bridge back on it. I'm not going to worry about height or intonation or nothing like that. Because it's not going to be played, it's just going to hang back on the wall again. So bear with me here for a second. Now I didn't practice the six P's again, so get all your eyelets aiming down the neck. Because it's just going to make things quicker and easier for you when you start stringing it up. All right. So, once you get the string through it, you pull it all the way through, and you got it set, you got your bridge in place, or your tailpiece in place, you got the big E string and the notch on the bridge. What you want to do is take your finger and hold it right in front of the next tuner above. I'll show you what to do when we get to the last one. So. Take it back all the way to your fingers touch the, the tuner that you're getting ready to string. And then take this string and go over the top to the inside of the headstock. Come back and hold it like this to keep tension. Let me see if you can see my fingers. So hold it like that 
to keep the tension and just leave this hand holding this string like that and you have it in the bridge down there now the next thing you want to do is bend this string up so now you've got it going through the the eyelet and then you came over into the inside of the headstock you bent the string up now the next thing to do is to make sure that this goes under so now when it goes under you can see here the first one goes over the second one goes under so now this is bear hugged it's not going to go nowhere and i still have at least another turn or turn and a half to go around that so there we go let me see if I can get a better, boy, I wish this thing would work right. Such a POS. So anyways, there you go. Maybe. Oh, I hate this. DJI. I'm buying something different. So there you go. You can see that the string is actually bear hugged. So now you can drop tune and you don't have to worry about it slipping out or anything like that. And there you go. You can see how the green is going to look on there. So let's go ahead and just, whoop, I am having all kinds of trouble with this tonight. That's the other thing too, since the new app, this POS, if I push right, it goes left. I push right, <laughs> you know, left, it goes right. Up, it goes down, down, it goes up. It's so confusing now. I've been wanting to just throw the son of a bitch against the wall. I mean, talk about aggravating. So anyhow, I'm not having the greatest day with that. And then the other thing too I highly advise is after you get one string done, clip it off because when you go to do your next string, if you bend over to look in, you don't want this thing sticking you in the friggin' eyeball. So again, we'll just repeat this process in case you guys didn't catch it the last time. And then I'll show you what to do when you get to the top of the headstock. So again, grab it in front of here. Put your finger here. And then you got the tension held up. Come around over the top to the inside of the headstock. Bend your string up. And then to make sure when you wind it that this you can use your finger to hold it and make sure it goes underneath and once it gets started underneath it it'll just naturally continue to wind like that and then right there boom we have it over and under that string is bear hugged it's not gonna let go and as you can see still have another almost full wrap around there give that one a little cut And moving on to the next one. So we got a lot of stuff coming here for the Zach Wild guitar that you guys just seen me unbox with the apparition. If you guys are watching for the first time, go back and watch my I had two Zach Wilds. It's the most recent one. At, uh, well, you can read the comments down below, but at like 58 seconds, a little apparition comes dancing all around in the, in the film. And so, okay, we're back here on this one, not to get off track. Now you're going to want to grab it behind it and then move back behind it here and then come back up here and grab it and go around to the inside over the top. Same thing, bend the string up winder on make sure it goes under and that's just about done i noticed too that these smaller strings are looking 
lighter green. And I wonder if it's just because they're thinner, but they're a lot brighter than the two big ones. I don't know if you guys can see that yet or not, but we'll clip that off. Moving on to the next one. And you see the other thing too is if you string it up like this and you got to set your intonation or your bridge height and all that, when you do loosen these to be able to adjust your bridge or your intonation, the string isn't going to slip because it's being bear hugged. So it's a, it's a really, really ingenious way of stringing your guitar up. And I cannot take credit for it because I found it on YouTube. You can find just about everything on YouTube nowadays. So again, on the ones where there's no tuner ahead of it, grab it behind it, go back just before the next one. Then you go up and over to the inside of the headstock, come back, bend your string up. Now this is where I always get screwed up because it's backwards. So if you have to, you just use your thumb to hold that while you turn the tuner. That's being a pain in the ass tonight. Okay. And there goes the sump pump. We have had so much snow here. Last week we got 26 inches. This week we got about 15. Just crazy out there. And then we had a 40 degree weather right in between us, so we had so much melt off. So there we go. Almost done. Yeah, I think this is gonna look pretty cool hanging on a wall with the green strings on it. It's too bad you can't change the color of the light. They should have made it where you could push a button and change the color of the light. This is a dealer only sign. I went to a guitar shop that was going out of business and I bought a whole bunch of stuff off of them. And this was one of the things that I bought. The only other place that I've ever seen one of these is a world of music in Erie, Pennsylvania. They have the same exact sign I do, only theirs has a black special on it. And uh, in my opinion, it doesn't look as good with the black guitar on there. So here we go again, up and over, bend this up, make sure it's in your bridge, start to wind it. Again, if you have to, use your thumb to, uh, it's a lot harder on this side, especially when you're trying to demonstrate it and show. So anyways, there we go. We got it over and under. That string is locked in. So that is the best way to do it if you don't have lock or locking tuners. Because like I said, it's, it's not gonna let go. And you don't have to wind seven, eight, nine times around it. I hate when I see that. My tribute over there is not strung correctly so that would be another one that I can show you guys that is completely incorrect and we may do it on another video because this one's getting pretty long we're down to the last string I'll get to show you guys what it looks like we'll hang it up on the sign and then we'll end this video but I just wanted to show you guys the green monster strings how I uh, lock a string when there is no locking tuner and then I will get the other two sets up for sale. So if you guys want uh, green strings on your guitar, they look really cool, but they got to be on the right guitar. And this is the only guitar that I have at the moment that they'd look decent on. So, and they're limited edition. So it'd be cool to keep them on this sign. So here we go again, grab it in front of this one, push it back to that one up and over to the inside of the headstock. Hold that down, bend this up, 
you can switch hands. And we're almost done. And I don't have to worry about tuning it either because it's just going to hang on the wall. And there we go. That is it. So, that's what it looks like. And I think the other strings just look brighter because they're thinner. And once you get past this string here, the last three, they're not round wound. They're just solid strings. So, yeah, it looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and hang it back up on the sign. And I guess I can just set you here. Throw this up here, and then we'll take in one last look at it. Here we go. Monster Energy Green Strings. Limited Edition Dunlops. So, that's what it looks like now. I think it looks pretty cool. Tell me what you guys think. Alright, until next time, don't forget to like and subscribe.